Analysis of structure method of sections. One of the most commonly asked questions in the exams or licensing exam or certification exam. Um, anything you are tested on this analysis of structure, you will be basically asked this question in, in those exams. Now, when you have a very large um, a structure like this tower crane, for example, and you are interested to see what's going on in one of those members or multiple members, what you can do is you can simply uh, take a section in the 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 members you are interested in and just only calculate those member forces uh, very simple techniques now before you do anything you have to find out the reaction forces at each each point which i have done already if you're still not comfortable how to find reaction forces i posted some videos earlier to find reaction forces in any structures so here we did that calculation now here what you're going to do is we're going to take a section around right here or we'll cut everything um, right here cut this d e c f and c e and then ignore everything um, in the right side so this is the situation so our only focus will be on this section and we ignore everything on the right side so um, first thing we need to so here we got three variables so d f c f and c e even though you're not seeing those points, but for the sake of consistency and easiness, we'll use those points as reference so that we can. So we have three unknown forces here, DF, CF, and CE. And we have three equations available. The moment at any point, sum of all the moment is zero. Summation of all forces along Y x is zero summation of all forces along x axis is zero so you have three forces three unknown we can easily solve that now we'll need the angle so this is 30 feet was given so we'll calculate this angle right now so this angle would be basically 10 inverse 25 divided by 30 i calculated it 39.8 degree so this is also the same angle 39. A degree so then here we can simply take moments with respect to point C all counterclockwise moment positive everything sum to zero so if you take moment with respect to C you will be able to cancel both CF and CE force so we're only having this um, reaction for 660 pound which will do a clockwise moment so it's going to be minus with respect to C 6600 zero and it is 30 foot away from C and then D will all uh, D the force 24 is passing through um, C so it's not gonna cause any moment so only thing left here is D F and we're gonna assume this in this direction it doesn't matter for the unknown unknown forces the direction you assume however if you know some force already you must have the correct direction um, for example this 600 um, 6600 and this 2400 must be in the direction where they are but all the unknowns you can assume any direction any random direction you want um, so just simply you can assume whatever looks or good um, um, to you plus so then uh, there will be a moment for that df with respect to c which will also cause a negative moment so df and that is 20 feet five feet away from c so everything sum to zero so then we'll find out the df is negative seven nine two zero and uh, that's what we found now the minus or plus is not that important here what is important whether this member is in compression or tension now if you in here in this case we're looking at point d and our original direction was wrong so it was actually acting from f to d instead of d to f so it is actually compressing point d so if it's compressing then it's compression C so this DF member will be in compression so we, we use one of our equation then we're gonna use summation of FY maybe doesn't matter which one you use first 
all the upward force positive. So then we have plus 660 at point A minus 2400 at D. Then plus the component of C in Y direction, which is CF sine of that angle theta. So CF sine 39.8 everything sum to zero so then we'll be able to find out the CF I found that uh, minus 6561 again minus or plus is not that important what is important whether this member is in compression or tension now our original assumed direction was from C to F which was not correct so it's the other way around so it is actually working towards c from f so it is compressing c we are looking at point c because it's compressing c this will be in compression so that is done now we can write our next equation which is summation of fx is equal to zero the right direction force positive so we have here plus c e then uh, plus df plus cf cosine 39.8 everything sum to zero so if we put ce now df was calculated negative 7920 cf also was calculated negative 6561 cosine 39.8 degree everything sum to zero here I found CE is positive 12,960. Now again, positive negative is not a, an important factor here. It is the whether this member is in compression or tension. Now CE direction was correct. Um, we assumed by chance correctly so it is pulling the point C if it's pulling the point then it's in tension so 12,960 pounds is in tension for these members now this way you can take section in any way you can take for example section here ignore everything to the left side so then you will be finding forces for this member, this member, and this member. So you already know this one, this one, and this one. And then what you can do, you can take a section right here and ignore everything on this side. So you'll find this guy and this guy. You take a section here. Then you'll find this one and this one. You can take a section here like this. So you'll find D. You can take a section here. Then you can find Z. And you can keep going like that. Um, so for EF, probably be a little bit difficult, but you can take a section like this. And once you know everything, there will be just only one unknown here, EF. So not a really big deal. So I did take section in all these different points and calculated the forces here. You can see for each of these members and whether they are in compression or tension, um, that is also indicated here as well. I forgot to do EF, that will be for your assignment.